Hello everybody and welcome back. So we got our Murray slammed down as low as we could get it. We got our body adjusted to fit the new height. We got our wiring reinstalled. It's ready to go and I can smell the finish line. Today we're going to be working on the shifter and the brakes. Shifter should be pretty straightforward. It's on the right hand side at the rear axle. I need to weld up the panels on the fender, cut out a slot for my shifter to move through, and then weld the shifter up to the linkage down the bottom. On the brake side, there's a caliper right here on the left side of the rear axle and the lever on the top of the caliper needs to be pulled forward to be able to apply the brakes. So I'm gonna have some sort of brake lever linkage up here on the front side of the fender. And depending on where the fulcrum of my lever is at, it'll either push forward or pull back to apply the brakes. It should be pretty straightforward, even though I don't really have a solid plan on this side, but I'm gonna start off by welding my panels up and then we'll jump right into the shifter. So let's get it. All right, so to weld the panels on, I'm gonna be using a 120 volt Miller welder. I got 035 flux core wire in it. And I'm gonna be doing one tack at a time and I'm gonna be spreading them out to let the heat dissipate before I go back and put another tack. So I'll put a tack here, a tack here, a tack down here, a tack over here. And by the time I finish up this tack, this one should be cool again. I can go back and add a tack here, add a tack here and so on just work my way around making sure that it stays fairly cool as I'm tacking it together. If I get it too hot too fast I'm gonna end up with some bending and a lot of warpage so I'm just trying to avoid that all together. Keep it cool, tack it all together, take my time, we'll see how it works. I got the right side finished up. I got all my major seams welded completely. I ground them down and then sanded them down with a grinder. But that's as much weld as I need to put on there to be able to cut out the slot for my shifter to go into. Later on, I'll be able to go back and weld the rest of the panels together. I'll save you the trouble of watching me do the other side because it's going to be exactly the same as this side. But let me get that done and then we'll move on to cutting out the slot for our shifter. Two hours later. All right, there we go. Left side finished up, right side finished up. All the main seams are welded right in the areas where I'm going to be having my brake lever and shift lever. Now, let's get on to the shift lever. Let me show you what we're doing. So this right here is our shift linkage that comes from the transmission through the frame. And this is what we're going to be welding onto it. So I need to line this up and measure the distance from the inside of my fender wall to this shift lever. And then I'll make that same measurement on the outside and make a mark and then I'll cut about twice the width of this rod out of the fender right here. So this will be able to poke through and then move up and down to shift. Yeah, we did. Well, the whole slot is a little bit too far towards the center, but I can cut this shaft down another about half inch or so, 
and it would fit right in the middle. I think if I actually just grind this off so it's perpendicular to the shaft, it would line up a lot better on my linkage and be able to move freely and sit right in the center. So let me grind that straight and we'll try it again. All right, let's try it now. All right, we're just about ready to weld our shaft back onto our linkage, but before I take the body off, I'm gonna use some vice grips to hold our shaft in place while I tack it so I make sure that it lines up with our gap right here. The transmission is already in reverse, which is the rearmost gear, so I'm gonna have my shaft as close to the back of this slot as possible, and that gives us as much room as we need to be able to go through the rest of the gears. So let me get this tacked in place first, and then we'll pull the body off and put a full weld on it. All right, we've got our shaft tacked in place and everything looks all right, except we're about two inches shy of poking out of the top right here. But I got some extra shaft. So we'll cut a piece off of this once we get that welded all the way around and figure out how high I want it sticking out. I gotta keep in mind on how far it's gonna stick out in the forward direction so I don't get into my gas pedal up here. But we'll see what we can do. Now let's get this body off of here and put a full weld on that shaft. All right, we've got our shifter all welded up completely. It's working great. Let's get the body back up here and see how our slot works out. I think that should clear with how far we have it cut already, but we may also have to notch it out just a little bit farther. Let's see. All right, shifter's looking great. So I'm gonna use the old shifter handle grip and I would like for it to sit right about there. So I just need to measure how long of an extension we need for it to sit right where I want it. That's about five and a half inches. So I'm gonna cut off a shaft that's five and a half inches and then we'll play around with it and see how it works out. First, let's see. It's reverse, neutral, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Pretty fast in the last ones. But that's sixth gear and it's not touching anything. It would be nice to have a longer handle. All right, well we have freedom to move through all of our gears. That's exciting. Let's get a five and a half inch extension cut out and then we'll pull the body off and weld that in place. shaft is welded and sanded. When I stand back a little bit, I can see it's got a little bit of a kick to it, but we're going to call that ergonomics. Let's get the body back up here, confirm that this all fits still, and then we'll start working on our brakes. All right, so I kind of saw this coming, but I, I couldn't think of a better way to do it. In reverse, everything looks great. In neutral, it's all right, but once you start getting into the forward gears, all the way down to sixth gear, this is right where my leg should be. Now, theoretically, I should be able to put it in gear, put my leg over the shifter, and still work my throttle, but I 
I can only imagine it being pretty tough if I were sitting on it trying to go from six gear to reverse or uh, reverse to six gear, something like that, where I have to use the full spectrum of gears with my leg right there. And my best guess is I just have to hike one leg up, shift, and then put it back down. At least for right now, that's the, that's the plan. But if you can think of a better idea, leave me a comment and let me know. For now, this will work. Let's get on to the brake side of things. All right, let's talk about brakes for just a minute. Now the brakes on these transmissions, it works very similar to car brakes. There is what would be a rotor, there is a caliper, and this is our lever that pushes the pistons on the caliper and squeezes a little brake pad onto our rotor right here. And the way that this lever works, it's bent in a certain shape that when you pull it in one direction, it pushes those pins as it tries to turn around. So the way it's oriented now, we'll have to pull on the bottom side of the lever to apply the brakes. So I have what used to be our blade and gauge lever, and we're going to repurpose it for the brakes again. I'm going to make a mount somewhere on the frame right about here out of a couple pieces of angle iron. So I'll take two pieces and go back to back. This will go through both of them, have a washer on each side, and then a couple bolts going through to hold it in place. Once I get that bracket made, I'll get it welded onto the frame right here, and then I'll be able to put my lever in and figure out where it's gonna come through the body so I can make the cut. I think I'm gonna wanna have it pointed forward just a little bit, maybe about 45, 60 degrees, uh, just so that it has a little bit more clearance to get out of that fender, and I can reach down and grab it a little more comfortably instead of reaching up beside me. So, let's start off with cutting the angle iron making the mounting point for our lever and we'll go from there. So I forgot to mention real quick, it's not just going to be angle iron with this sitting on top or drilled through it. I have these washers and these are going to weld onto the angle iron with just enough clearance so this can still go through it. So I'm going to cut the angle iron down to a piece of the width of the washer when it's right there and then I'll weld the washer onto it trim down the lip and then be able to weld it onto the frame. Now that I got my bracket welded up, I can show you what I'm talking about. So this is going to be welded on the frame just like that. And my brake lever is going to sit inside and there will be one bolt going through each of these holes and that's going to lock in place inside this mounting point. And I'm going to have a tab coming off the bottom of this lever and I can link that tab to this tab so that when I pull back on the lever, the tab will go forward and pull this lever forward. That way I can have a, a pulling brake lever instead of a pushing brake lever. So the next thing I'm going to do is weld this bracket in place and then I can set my body back onto the frame, see where my brake lever is going to poke through the body and start making cuts on that. Let's try it out. Now 
that should be enough play to be able to apply the brakes. But this nub is a little short. So let's see how far we need to bring it up. That's an inch. So right now our brake lever sticks one inch above the body line right here. So we need to come up another three inches so we have enough room to put our grip on. So at least three more inches, maybe four. Yeah, we'll go with four inches. And to get those four inches and still keep this same top, I'm gonna cut it closer to the bottom. Then I'll add in an extension of this rod and then weld the other side back on the top. All right, got the brake lever extended. Let's see how it works out. I think that's perfect right there. And our handle is gonna go down to about right there. So I think that's plenty of room for movement, braking, all that good stuff. So let's get the body back off of here. We'll figure out where our tab needs to be welded on the bottom of this and we'll be extremely close to getting our brakes finished up. Okay, so my brake lever is gonna sit right about here. So I'm gonna want my tab to stick pretty close to straight up and down on the bottom side of this lever. And right here I got one of the angle iron tabs I'd cut off earlier. So I'm gonna cut a little U-shaped notch in the top of this piece and then I'll weld it onto the bottom and I'll be able to hook my caliper up to this tab right here. All right, let's try it out with the body on, see how it works out. For now, I'm just gonna put these screws in there as keepers, just so it can't slide out of place. And now we're ready to try it out. If you look at the little tab in there with the hole in it, you can see that when I pull the lever back, the tab moves forward, and that's gonna be directly connected to the caliper, which will also pull forward and apply the brakes. Then it'll spring back forward, and the brakes will go back to the resting position. All right, everything looks great. Let's get the body off of here one more time, get our linkage and return spring connected to our brake lever. Then we'll start piecing this thing back together. All right, we got the body off, and here are the three main components of our brake system outside of the caliper. So we have our brake lever, which is gonna be mounted right here. Our return spring, the small end is going to mount into the corner of our frame. The large end is gonna hook onto the caliper right here. That's gonna keep the caliper pulled back. And as we pull the lever, it's gonna pull against the spring and pull the caliper forward to apply the brakes. And this is going to be the linkage between our brake lever and the caliper itself. So I'm going to get the skinny end of the spring hooked onto the back side of the frame. Then I'll get the large end hooked onto the caliper. Then get the brake linkage connected to my caliper and the brake lever. And mount the brake lever in there, throw the body back on, and we're going to test it out.
all together, let's try it out. I'm gonna push it forward and then pull on the brake. Almost went off the edge there. That seems to work pretty awesome, so let me hop up there and see how it fits. Well, I think that's gonna work perfect. It's very exciting. We got our brake back, we got our shifter back, and everything's really close. Everything's hard to maneuver with, and that's kind of what I get for deciding to take a big thing and cram it down into this tiny little package. You end up running out of space, but it's all functional, and it's, it's, a, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's my mower, and I'm okay with it, so that's all that really matters. Well, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Leave me a comment if you got something on your mind. And subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Well, that's not bad.